Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 294 for Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. Welcome to Gig Gab, the show for, by, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here on the central coast of California, Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. How is, uh, how is Napomo today, my friend? It's nice. Another sunny day here. We, it's not been a lot of rain. And, um, you know, we usually get more rain does the rainy time. And uh, outdoor stuff is kind of poking its head. You know, more stuff getting hired. I've gotten a lot more inquiries lately. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it is good, uh, but but we're, we're good. The rain's going to come sometime, you know, right. before May, and so right. you know whether that stuff will get canceled or what, we'll see. But I've got uh, you know one down here uh, in March, and I've got one up in the Bay Area in March, so it's just nice, you know. And still, that's kind of safe, you know, distant stuff. I see pictures posted of you know in many places where people are elbow to elbow, and uh, yeah. you know, I guess we're not out of the woods yet, but I mean, I, I think. People are making their decisions, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Hopefully those decisions still allow us to progress out of the woods. Like it's it's hard to know, right? So yeah. Yep. Yeah. I um so. yeah, I, I'm jealous of your your weather when you say it's sunny and beautiful because it was uh ten and we're we're in the middle ten Fahrenheit. Uh <laughs> ten. ten when I when I stepped out of my house to walk across to the office this morning. And so if it's uh, twice as warm tomorrow, it'll be Yeah. Yeah, 20. 20. Still, <laughs> yeah. still really effing cold. Um, the, and, and we had a windstorm that started at about 11 p.m. last night. I think it's going to go until about that time today. So the wind is like constant at about 30 knots and then gusting up to like 60. So the power was flickering on and off all night and, you know, all that fun stuff. Hopefully we get through this this episode without uh, without any of those types of issues. But lots yeah. of trees down and, you know, mayhem. But not not... Compared to the mayhem that we've seen elsewhere, not mayhem, but just, mm -hmm. you know, craziness. So, so I had an interesting experience on Saturday, Paul, playing uh, the two shows of Next to Normal. Our music director and I have each played this show before separately, and we both know it pretty well. We both really enjoy playing it. Uh, he, music director is also our, our piano player, our keyboard player. And, uh, and then there's guitar, bass, and then cello and violin and our violinist plays keys too. So it's a six person band. And, but he has a headset on and he will, you know, he counts us into songs and things like that. But also if he hears somebody is out of sync or whatever, he'll, you know, maybe call out a measure number or, you know, something like that just to, you know, keep everybody on the same page. And so, uh, I realized on Saturday that I have gotten to the point where most of this show is memorized. I don't trust that I've memorized it, but it is mostly memorized. And I had, I actually had one moment where I was playing what I remembered. And then it was like, Oh, the end of the song's coming. I should look at the music. And I synced up one measure ahead of where we were. So I started ending the song a measure early. It wasn't the, uh, it wasn't terrible, but he was like, Oh no, no, one more measure. I'm like, yeah, 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 okay. You know, so, so like he'll do things like that, which is great. Like totally perfect to keep us all in sync. And there are times when things will jump on stage and, you know, he'll call out a measure number like, okay, this is where we are now, you know, right is a consensus and they have decided this is where we are. And that's also fine. But we started this one tune. Uh, one of the, uh, this song, this, this show's got three or four songs in it that are like, I mean, they're just fantastic songs. This one tune, it's uh, called Superboy and the Invisible Girl. It's, it's in 11. It's written in six, eight and five, eight alternating measures, but they don't always alternate. There are moments where it's like you get three measures of five and then you're back to six, five, or you get three measures of six and then you're back to six, five. So you, you, you know, you can get into a groove with it, but you got to pay attention. And so, you know, we start the tune and things are going fine. It starts with like a little triangle figure, whatever, while we're vamping. And then it comes out of that. And then we play one measure of that or one, one couplet of that, the six, five thing. And then it's just acoustic guitar and vocal. And for whatever reason, I chose to watch my music during this part. And I looked a, a, a section ahead 
So I started playing the second verse, which has hi-hat going underneath it. And I realized this about two measures in and thought, okay, well, there are a finite number of people at the moment who know I've made a mistake by playing here when I shouldn't be. But it's not like I was playing the wrong thing. I was just playing at the wrong time, right? So it, it like fit with what was happening, except it, it just shouldn't have come in yet. And I thought quickly to myself, well, if I stop now, I've exponentially increased the number of people who know I've made a mistake. And this now is no longer musical, right? Because I'm stopping a thing that for no good reason. And so I decided I'm just going to play it through. And then when the second verse comes in, I'll just keep playing, you know, and it'll be fine. Uh, but I, what was weird to me was our music director never said anything to me. And I'm like, I hope I'm right that I'm wrong. Like I'm, I'm, I was certain that I was right that I was wrong. Like I, you know, I played the song a bunch. I know, I knew where we were. I know what's going on. I'm like, okay, fine. And at the set break or whatever we call it, intermission, I went up to him and I'm like, hey man, you know, uh, sorry about that one measure I skipped. And and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, okay. And I told him why. And he's like, he, we laughed and it was like, yeah, it's fine. And he's like, oh yeah, and in Superboy, he's like, he's like, you know, you came in early, but he's like, I really liked what you did. He's like, you just like, oh, now there's hi hat here, like this is great, I'm like cool. I'm, he's like, that's the way to make a mistake. I'm like, I agree, that is the way to make a mistake. I'm like, but you didn't say anything to me. He's like, well, yeah, you had it covered, it was fine. I'm like, yeah, but it wouldn't hurt to communicate a little bit, <laughs> some sort of acknowledgement, like, yep, all's good. Do what you're doing. He's like, well, I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. I, you know, it came down to the fact that he trusted me too much. Now, he, in that particular moment, he was totally right to trust me. And maybe what's happening is some of that mind melding that that happens when you play music with the same person. You know, with with him, I played with him on and off for years. Yeah. You know, but but it was just an interesting thing. Like anybody else that makes a mistake gets called out for it. And he was like, no, you did fine. Like I, I but know. Isn't this a case of no news is good news. I mean, he would let you know if you did it wrong. Right. But if it, you no, know, but you know, his tolerance for, for a mess and his appreciation for the way a mess is handled is, right. you know, kind of the, you earn that respect, you earn that buy-in. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, it, what I would assume, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone looking for the affirmation. I would have been like, it cool, wasn't so you know. much affirmation. It was just like, okay, like normally when I make a mistake, I know it usually, but sometimes I make a mistake and don't know it. Right. And then it's really nice to have him in my ear being like, no, 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 no. Like this is where we are. Um, mm. And so not having that kind of shook my, my safety net confidence, if you will. Mm. Right. Like that's more what it was. It wasn't so much. I needed the affirmation. I was actually pretty impressed with myself with how I handled it. You know, it's like, Oh, I did the right thing. Like, you know, experience pays off. Thank goodness. But it was like, yeah, you didn't say anything to me. So now I don't know if you're going to say something the next time I make a mistake, <laughs> you know, yeah. th thankfully we all knew this one. So I don't know. It was, but it was an interesting thing. It's like, yeah, you, you know, having that thought, what do, what do pilots, there's a phrase that, that, uh, airplane pilots say that uh, you you it's it's like the it's like the old carpenters thing you know measure twice cut once think and really plan even if you find yourself in a you know a pressure scenario or something is going wrong you know the plane is in the air anything you do can make it worse right so think first before you make any changes and and so it was that same kind of pilot logic. And, it, and they've got a, a much pithier way of saying it that hopefully somebody will tell us feedback at giggabpodcast.com. But um, I'm only a wannabe pilot, not a real pilot. So uh, so I don't know the the phrases. But but that, that idea of, all right, you know something's gone wrong. Stop for a second. Breathe. Think. Now. React. You know, because you only get one chance to react. Maybe. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. Handling goofs on the fly is, is a, um, it's a, it's a brain chemistry thing. You know, it's, it's some odd combination of your confidence and your skills, your ability to, you know, kind of slow real world time down in your mind. Like yes. the rest of the world is still progressing, but in your mind, you're processing your options, you know, at, at a rapid, rapid pace and then picking the best one. Right? And then picking the best one. That's really what it is. It's like, Oh crap, I shouldn't be playing. Okay. Yeah. Kind of like the matrix. It's kind of like the matrix. Yeah. No, but it, I, those are the moments I love on stage is those. I mean, I don't like to be the one that causes them, but you know, sometimes you got to own what you own. But, um, but I do, I love that stuff. So that's, you know, makes it fun.
The an, another fun thing happened on Saturday. Literally, right as I was leaving for the theater, Mr. Postman dropped off uh, a package which included my set of Waves custom earphones. Uh, we talked about these a couple of weeks ago, Paul. These are custom molded in ear monitors. You scan with your phone, and uh, you, and it has to be an iPhone 10 or later that has the Face ID camera because the Face ID camera is actually able to do 3D modeling that way. Uh, and so you scan your ears with your phone. You submit these scans to them through an app that they've partnered with or they wrote. I'm not, I'm not sure which. And then uh, and then they use 3D printers to print your molds. The outer ear part of it is custom molded and looks just like a, an in ear an acrylic in ear monitor that you'd see from you know from anybody else. The inner ear part is actually a uh, it's got a, a tip on it that you can a replaceable tip so you can put different size like more like universal fit earphones. These are not universal fits, but they have that tip in there to really help get the seal right. And uh, so and I think yours arrived yesterday, right, Paul? Yeah, I got, I'm actually using them right now. Ah. And, um, you know, before we dig into this, and, and I'm going to be interested to hear, because you've actually played in a band. I've used them. I'm using them now for, you know, spoken word, and I've listened to some pre-recorded music. Sure. Um, you know, something has clearly happened where, because this is an order of magnitude price breakthrough from from what you can get in other places. Well, that's, right? yeah, we've buried the lead. It's 144 bucks for these. And that's for the upgraded model with dual drivers in each year. So yeah. out the door. <laughs> out the door. And, and, you know, that is, like I said, an order of magnitude. And sometimes these things happen, like something's going on with guitar wireless that you can get really cheap, really you know, like, like the patents have expired or something's gone on, but guitar wireless is not some, you know, $600 thing that you have to buy. Um, bass amps have gotten really small and light yeah. you know, for, and really powerful. So they're really like quantum breakthroughs. And I would consider these waves, um, a quantum breakthrough, 144 bucks for a custom outer ear fit. I'm still kind of messing with the, the inner to find the best tip for me to get, you know, a perfect seal. Yep. And get that nice rich sound. But when, you know, when I, when I kind of like hold it in place with my fingertips and I, you know, kind of get that fit, it is really, you know, a nice rich sound. I mean, it doesn't sound thin. It doesn't sound, you, you know, um, midi as, as some of them have. So um, I'm really amazed as, as what goes on. The only complaint I have is that the um, cables, so the cable that connects to the two earpieces, it's a kind of a click in part on each earpiece, which seems solid, which is cool. And I think it's but an industry wrap- standard um, click connector. That, the connector. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like the ones that we have on our, on my universal uh, UEs are uh, they're, they're their own kind of plug-in, right? Right. You have those as well, right? Uh, so- UE has changed their, pl- it depends on which year you got yours. I think UE is also using these MMCX connectors. Oh, cool. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Yeah. But, but, are- but yes. So, yes. So does that mean that if you ever have anything go wrong with your with your cable, you can actually go to, well, not a fries anymore, but you can go. <laughs> you go to Amazon. Go, yeah. Yeah. And you can actually get an industry standard connector for these. Yes. Yeah. This is, oh, I'm cool. looking on the website. It's it, it, the, the name of this connector is MMCX connection and it does just pop right in and out. But, but you're right. So I, I, I have, I had the same issue with these. They sound fantastic. Um, I did, I used them for sound check on Saturday and they sounded great. Even with, there was the one, the bass was actually too loud for, for part of sound check, but it wasn't distorting from these. It was, you know, like the low end, the richness, the kick drum and everything really comes through. They've got a nice bite to them. Um, I used them also for a jam Kazam session with fling, uh, last night and they worked great for that too. Like the, the sound is rich and full. I forgot that I was using anything new with mm. my session with fling. And perhaps that's the best Testament I can give as someone who's been using in your monitors for, you know, literally decades. Uh, yeah. but the, the, the cable is the weak point here, uh, for sure, because it doesn't have most cables have a little, I don't want to call it a paperclip, but a wire may be perhaps a little thinner than a paperclip in the section that comes right off the ear so that you can really mold the cable and fit it around your ear. 
And these don't have that. And so I had a real hard time, especially at the theater. Now the package was cold. It had just come literally from the mailman. Right. So the, the plastic on the earpiece was, or on the cable was cold and I just couldn't get it to bend right. And it, I knew that it was going to fight me during the gig. And I'm like, I got enough to think about with this show. You know, I can't have that kind of distraction to mess with. So I just went with my, my ultimate years 11s. Now, I happened. I mean, that's a that's a statement of um, immense privilege. I had two sets of custom in ear monitors to choose from. One is a hundred and forty four dollars set that was brand new and I hadn't really experienced yet, and the other is a thirteen hundred dollars set that I had experience with. So I, it's no great surprise that I went with the thirteen hundred dollars set, but uh, that but you were comfortable with. that I was comfortable with. But it was more, quite frankly, it was more about the comfort, and I knew I wasn't going to fight with the fit of them. Uh, I was still like you, I was still at that point in time trying to figure out what tips were the right tips for the waves. And again, I'll say if you're using these types of, you know, either universal fit or these types of tips on, on customs like these have your two ears are almost certainly going to be different from me, from each other. So just because one of your fits, don't think that you have to use the same tip in the other one. I, right. yeah. So just, just a reminder for everybody out there, but, but not only is it a custom, you know, outer ear mold, you get to kind of pick the pattern that you want, mm. you know, you get a little bit of decor choice. I mean, it, I, I think this is pretty extraordinary. Again, once I'm, you get over I'm blown away and you, and you yeah. knock, yeah, you knock it out that for 144 bucks, you, you're going to have custom in-ears, custom in-ears I know. and the sound passes muster. I mean, and no appointment with an audiologist. So you're not paying the 50 to 150 bucks to get your ears molded just so you can then pay someone else to make them for you. Right. Like that's no. those, those ultimate ears. Well, I guess ultimate is now they're doing a, their own scanning with their own kind of thing. So you can skip the audiologist with ultimate now, but for the last 15, 20 plus years, that was not the case. Like, you know, and with every other vendor out there, you've got to go to your audiologist. Like, you know, we talked to Jerry Harvey at JH audio, you go to your audiologist, you pay your audiologist, and then you pay Jerry or whomever to make your in-ears for you. So like the, the that 144 bucks is truly your cost. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's remarkable. Yeah. yeah. And you know, to me, you, you got to play a little bit with live music yeah. and I've only used them for spoken and for pre-recorded music. But to me, the test will be, um, you know, I'm sensitive to in-ears to begin with. Right. When something changes on stage, it makes me crazy and I just have to rip them out and just kind of deal. And the things that change are typically someone turning up and screwing up my mix. Right. Mm -hmm. So if, if the, if the mic on the kick drum gets kicked closer and all of a sudden, you know, it's much louder on the kick drum and it dominates my mix, that really makes me nuts. If the bass player turns up, I don't, you know, or gets kind of flubby yep. in his act, that's the stuff where the in-ears become in, in instantly useless and the quality of the in-ear. So having tried to, you know, use some off the shelf, non-custom mold ones, those are the things that usually fall off the shelf for me right away is that they can't handle that kind of interesting kind of change to dynamics. Sure. Yeah. I didn't have any trouble. I mean, they, they sound great. Like I said, I used them, I used them for our sound check and it was fine. Uh, and then I used them for probably an hour last night on jam Kazam with the fling guys. And, and it was, it was fine. My ears were a little, I will, you know, be, and I, I attribute this to the cable. My ears were a little sore after my hour with them last night. But I, again, I, I think it was because, so there's two things. inner ears, right? No, no. Like my, 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 like the, the, you know, the funny looking parts of your ears that stick out from the side of your head. Uh, that's what was sore. And it, I, I really attribute this to the cable, but you can, you can buy a new cable for somewhere between 20 and 30 bucks on Amazon. If, if you're like me and really picky about what your cable does, I I'll put a link in the show. Notes. And so you could actually buy a cable that has that kind of molded yeah. part where it connects to the earphone. Yeah. The other thing that these, I feel like these could work perhaps without the molded part. If they had a lot of cables will have like a little slide, like a sleeve that goes up so you can yeah. control how long the distance is of the, the split part that goes out to your ears and you sort of put your ears in and cinch that up and it kind of locks everything in place. This cable also lacks that. So, uh, so I think between those two things, it just was, you know, that's sort of fighting me uh, in, in terms of the way I wear these things. But uh, yeah, the goal is to, for them to not feel like they're even there. Like correct. just you are not aware of anything. And 
the nice thing about this is it definitely makes it feel like your your wallet has not been a part of, yeah. of the process. I mean, right. that's, that and that's really well, cool. Yeah. And the sound, you know, again, we start with basically the sound has to be cut most and they sound delightful. So I'm, I'm looking I'm forward to trying away. them. Yeah. 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 What yeah. a price. It's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. and you yeah. wonder if this will affect the, you know, the UEs and the other custom manufacturers out there. Who would make the, you know, the, the, because it probably does cost more to manufacture the ones that are custom mold All inner ear through. as well as outer ear. So, yeah. Well, I, I think my guess, I have not talked to the, the guys at Waves about this, so I will, I'll ask the question or they'll hear this and they'll give the answer. But my guess is that because you're using your phone and you're not actually putting something into your ear to scan it, my guess is that's why they've gone with a, you know, more uh, adaptable inner ear portion of these, but it really does. Like I can get a great seal with these uh, as long as I use the right tips and they're standard yeah. tips. So they send you, I think four different three tips sets. per ear. Yeah. Like the, the I, foam and then three silicone. Oh yeah. Four. You're right. Four. Yeah. I'm looking at the package now. Yeah. So, so I, cool. I'm blown away. I really, the sound of these, like you said, it starts with the sound. That that's not an issue. We, I, we spent most of the time talking about these, you know, talking about the cable that we don't like, and and that's a testament to the fact that we like everything else about. Them. That's true. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, it, it really. Everybody in the pit was like, "Wait a minute, what is this? How much? <laughs> yeah, how much? I'm like 150 bucks. I'm like, well, it's actually less than that. And they're like, what? That's crazy. You know. So, yeah, it's great stuff. Really great stuff. So uh, thanks to the check them out. the guys at Waves for for working with us on, on this. And then, uh, uh, but go check them out. Like they, you know, we don't, we don't get anything out of this other than the satisfaction of you having equipment. That's going to a make your playing time better and B help protect your hearing, which is really, I don't know anybody who's spent more time with ears than you, Dave. And so, you know, if the sound passes your test, then yeah. that's a pretty cool thing. And again, you're, you're, you're using 13, fourteen hundred dollar in ears mm. regularly. So regularly. Cool. Yeah. I'm a spoiled brat when it comes to this stuff. Totally. Yeah. Um, so, but, but you know, uh, it, yeah, I, I would, I would happily use these on a gig, especially once I sort out this cable thing and I got to look and see, I think I've got some MMCX cables from like, some sure universal fits that I've used in the past. So I gotta, I gotta look and dig and, and see. Otherwise I'll, 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 I'll spring and, and spend the 25 bucks on Amazon for a really nice one. So, yep. Get back to us. Yep. Yeah, I will. Hey, uh, I want to talk, you have a great conversation about your local scene or a great topic from your local scene that we're going to talk about. And I want to first tell everybody about our sponsor for this episode, which is Banzoogle at Banzoogle.com. Make sure when you go to banzoogle.com, you use the promo code GIGGAB, all one word, G-I-G-G-A-B. That gets you 15% off the first year of your subscription for this fantastic service. This is built by musicians for musicians. Banzoogle is your all-in-one platform that makes it super easy to build a beautiful website and or electronic press kit for your band, your music, your solo project, whatever it is. They can host your custom domain name along with everything else. Uh, they have, and the best part is you don't have to know how to design a web page. They know how to do that. So they've built all these perfect templates that you start with and then you customize those. So you're really just starting with, Hey, like I like the way this looks, but I wish I could change that part. Boom. That's what you're doing. Putting your own images in there, customizing the color scheme to really match your brand, your, your brand and your band. Right. <laughs> and, and then they've got, yeah, they've got, I want to say what I want to, what I was thinking in my head, Paul was, was saying this spelling out B R A N D and putting parentheses around the R it turns out there's really no way to say that. So, uh, so there, there you go. Uh, they've also got these tools th to sell your music, your merch, uh, crowdfunding, fan subscriptions, all of those commission free plus mailing list tools, social media integrations, all the things that as a musician and a band leader or a band member that you would want, they've got them. You know why? Because they're musicians, band leaders, and band members. They know what to do. And like I said, because you're a gig gab podcast listener, you go to bandzoogle.com, try it free for 30 days, use the promo code gig gab, all one word, and you get 15% off the first year of any subscription. So bandzoogle.com promo code gig gab, 
And our thanks to Banzoogle for sponsoring this Absolutely. episode. Yeah. I actually want to just add one more thing about Banzoogle. They, they communicate with their um, customers quite often yeah. with really great tips, like, you know, how to monetize this and how to use social media. And they recently came out with one that was just for singer songwriters or kind of like solo performers Ooh. about the, um, the, um, the templates that they have that are specifically for that genre of music, really, really helpful and really, really useful. So, it makes a difference when it's musicians talking to musicians. I just think it's it's, uh, it's yeah. been a you know really valuable for me. Like I've said every time, happy customer here, the House Rockers host with Banzoogle, and uh, it's it's really great service. Awesome. So tell me about your yeah. local scene, man. Yep, I want to share this conversation. So you know, there's not a lot of socializing going on. So I've reached out. I've had a few introductions of common acquaintances. And I've just kind of seen the people who seem to have the biggest fan bases and, and uh, just reached out and said, Hey, I'm a new musician in town. And, and uh, you know, just want to say hi and, you know, hope to meet you sometime and just starting to try to build a network as, as I am want to do, as I'm sure you would be want to do if you move. So you, sure. you know, take a little bit of your day job chops and you just say, you know, more is better, you know, making the pool fill up with, with people who you can interact with. Maybe it'll lead to gig, maybe it'll lead to a referral, maybe it'll lead to, you know, something. So you just kind of start that process. And so I've been reaching out. I actually got a call from a guy who uh, was introduced at that one uh, restaurant that I've been, had a couple of gigs at. Yeah. Uh, the owner of that restaurant said, hey, you know, you guys are from the same place. You might know some people together. The guy reached out and very nice guy and was very um, interested in, in connecting. Uh, he actually came to my gig at that restaurant and we had a, a quick cheers and, and, uh, and, you know, connected. And I said, Hey, let's grab a cup of coffee sometime. So we had a coffee and the conversation was interesting, very insightful. He was very, you know, generous with his knowledge and perspectives of the local scene, but we got into a, a re really interesting area that coincidentally, there've been a couple of side threads on some of the, our, our friends, you know, sites um, about this very topic. This new acquaintance of mine is an original artist. He has um, recorded um, a few albums. He has had a couple of his songs picked up and recorded by other people. Sure. And his his he made a comment to me. Again, we're having this nice conversation. He made a very directed comment to me, you know, that like, I'm just not interested in covers. I don't understand why other people do it. You know, why do you want to play another song that someone else has played a hundred times? You know, my art is original music. Mm. And it was actually a, a, an almost awkward moment that in the, as I'm processing, this is okay. I, I've, I've met with these types of people before, right? This is not this, you know, resist the temptation to assume this guy is dissing me. Sure. Um, and, and just, you know, kind of put it in more, this is his art. He feels passionate about it. This is his perspective of things. He, I'm going to chalk this up to um, a filter that I would have applied in this situation didn't get applied by the other person, right? <laughs> yeah. Fair enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, yeah. And I, you and I know a lot of technical people who who <laughs> deploy filters or the lack of filters in very interesting, creative ways, yes. right? So yes. I would I would put this into that category. He actually reached out after the conversation to say, hey, I, I hope I didn't put you off yeah. by that comment. And I just said, hey, you know, different strokes for different folks. You know, all all perspectives are cool. And, you know, I, this is what I do and and whatever. But then, like I said, I saw this this conversation. Oh, actually, the money, the money quote here was that in this conversation was a a stating of the perspective about the value of putting original art in the world, along with a recognition of that the audiences of the world, you know, or let's just say the audiences of this area certainly want to hear things that they're familiar with covers. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that a lot of the gigs end up going to cover things. And, you know, there's a frustration from someone who's purely an original artist that, you know, that the, the scene doesn't support. And I would assume that that's, that's, a largely universal thing in, in most markets, right. That, that, uh, you know, covers pay the bills in a lot of way covers. I, you know, I know, I know original musicians who go out on tour and when their tours are done, they have their wedding projects here because sure. it's really good. Right. I mean, it just, it just is. And the, uh, and the question of art versus not art, that's a, that's a slippery slope to go down. Don't you think? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I will say though, that if you want to make a career of, of being a musician and, and maybe it should be a side career of being a musician. Um, 
It, because that's the only real way I know. Of, it, I have, it's the only one I have personal experience with, right? I, I, other than some short stints here or there, I have not done music full time. But if you want to do it as a side career, I, I've definitely found that original projects are more lucrative long term than cover projects. Uh, but getting started, you know, you can get paid pretty well for your first gig as a cover band right out of the gate. And, and you don't have that several year ramp up time that it takes with an original project where you have to do all of the stuff to get your music out there and promote that and, and all that. But once you do, now you've got fans that are yours, right? Nobody else, they can't go and hear those same songs from anybody else, right? They, and they are part of your scene, not just the scene, but your scene. And it definitely works. And I, I've experienced this a few different times in a few different places. And, and it, it seems that actually seems to be fairly universally true. Uh, in many places, you're right. Cover bands also have a home, like Portsmouth, New Hampshire, there's a couple of places that have covers, but the rest of it is is all originals in in downtown Portsmouth. Yeah, and and, that, and, and that's a scene that has been made for several dynamics contributing to it, like yeah, like venue owners who are committed to that type Correct. of thing because they want to support the art. I Correct. mean, there's a reason, and it's a it, you know, but they also the, know if I have this band here, this original band then I'm going to draw people because they're going to see that band. And, and, I, and I, and there is money in that. I mean, that's, you know, that's how we made a lot of money when I was in college was doing exactly that. We had an original band that, that kicked butt and blew away size wise in terms of the crowd blew away all the cover bands on top of that. Like, and I'm just talking about like gig for gig, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, but then on top of that, as an original band, you start selling your T-shirts and you're, you know, you're, well, at the time CDs now, maybe not, but actually even now you can, you know, people will buy your CDs because they're at your gig. And, and even if they don't even have a CD player, they might buy them. Uh, but, you know, that kind of all that merch stuff, which you can do with a cover band and some people do very successfully. Most cover bands don't. Original bands, it seems to be more the case that it's like, yeah, you know, here's us. And now you've got people marketing your stuff for you. So I, I think there's. I, 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 again, personal experience, if you're willing to put in the ramp up time, I think original and you, and you have someone in the band who can write good songs. I, that, <laughs> that sort of goes without saying, but I need to say it, <laughs> you know, just because you decide you're going to be an original band doesn't mean doesn't you're mean any you're good at it. Yeah. And, and you won't be good at it right until you keep doing it over and over again. You iterate and, and all of that stuff. Um, but, um, but if you've got that drive in you and, and there needs to be that drive in you, like your, your buddy that, that had this conversation, right? Like he definitely has the drive to be an original artist, right? He knows that he's got to put in the work and write the songs and he wants, he needs to write the songs, right? Like that's yeah. who he is. So if you've got that, then, then leverage that drive and keep going with it because it, it really can be, um, far more lucrative and you get to sort of control your own destiny a little bit more with an original project it is again, well, as, long, as long as you're willing to ramp it up, but you've got to yeah, be able yeah. to invest that time. Yeah. Let me, let me just try this on you. So extracting, I I've not tried to sell my own original music, you know, tried to sell it as live or, or pre-recorded. Right. I, my reflection on the conversation is that purists, with kind of a religious furor to their purity mm -hmm. have difficulties in all aspects of life. Right. Um, covers are not the enemy of original music. You, no. you, you have to, that, 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 that needs to be said. And that actually is my, yeah, that if I knew this guy better, I think that's probably what I would, what I would have said. But again, you know, just trying to feel out the scene. I kind of let him go. And I, of course, I need to, yeah, right? of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But covers are not the enemy of original music. And if anything, you know, the market is what it is. He's telling me that he understands the market and people here seem to really like covers. Well, yeah. Well, you're in kind of covers. a tourist area too, right? Or at least in the summertime. So, yeah, but even up in, in San Jose, I mean, you know, the, it was a different path for original music than yep. it was for, you know, like I, I had 150 gigs a year, you know, yeah. you know, doing what I do. But if you, 
if your market is telling you that there is a there is a music consuming thing, I would think that the that the task ahead of you is play three covers and you know delight people by connecting with them with the with the known and then work in an original until you can do all your originals, right? You know, it's, it's up to that's you to a, get an audience. That's a tried and true path, right? I mean, the, you know, it <laughs> starts with the Beatles and the Stones. Uh, <laughs> it, it does, right? Like they were cover bands at first, uh, sure. at least at some level. And then, you know, but you look at Van Halen, you know, they 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 had covers on their first couple of records yeah. and, and actually more than just their first couple of records. And that did really well for them. You know, that helped them break in the Black Crows. Same kind of thing. If it weren't for covering that Otis Redding tune, which a yeah. lot of people don't even know that Hard to Handle wasn't written by the Black Crows. Right. 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 But if it wasn't that for that, like, I don't know that we'd know who they were. Like that, hard to handle was a huge song for them. And it was like, oh yeah, they've got these other tunes. It introduced too. them, yeah. But it introduced them. It made them accessible. So yeah, that path is is tried and true. And even in the uh, you know the original bands that I've been in, even once established, we would. And I mean, the same is true with with Bitter Pill. Now we play you know some covers in the set here and there because they fit us. You know, now it's mm -hmm. you you get to the point where you pull in the covers that you want to show to people not necessarily that you want to hook people, but, but you know, there, that, that change can happen once you've got a crowd and you've got people that are paying attention to you and that sort of thing. So, yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's there, but, but yes, I, I fully agree with you. Covers are not the enemy of original music only except if that battle exists in your own head and then they might very well be like, for, like I said, Purists, yeah. you know, fight these uh, fight these battles for their lives, you yeah. know, in 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 pursuit of the support of their purity. Right. So, like the, the guy you were talking to, it sounds like for him, covers would be the enemy of original music, and and in, and you in know, his mind in his mind, yeah. Well, and and perhaps not just in his mind, but truly for him, like if he were to start playing covers, maybe that would you know, then he would stop playing his originals and that could be a really bad thing for him. Like our band in, in college, well, it was, I know it was our high school band, some of the same people. So I, it gets blurry, but we were, we started out as an all original band. We'd play the occasional covers. And then as we were playing, we started playing more and more covers and we, we did a weird path. We, we transitioned from an all original band and I, I, I'm pretty sure my friend Jeff will, will say this, and I think he's right, that our final gig, we didn't play one original at it. And and we all knew kind of knew it was our final gig, like the band was sort of petering out. And so, huh. the, you know, the energy wasn't there. But like our originals were better than the covers that we played. <laughs> so, mm. you know, and people liked them better. It was weird that we, you know, but we I think we got sick of the originals and perhaps what they had meant, like we had sort of given up on that band at that point. So it was like, yeah, we don't want to play any of our, our own songs. We'll like play a bunch of REM tunes or something. And, mm -hmm. and that's, and that's what we did. Like that, that last gig was fun. But as we were walking out, I remember Jeff saying to me, he's like, you know, we didn't play any originals tonight. I'm like, well, maybe that's telling us something, man. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I don't know, but yeah, I don't think it like, it, it's not some universal battle the, between originals and covers. No, but for some people it, it's absolutely true. So, and that's okay. Like, you know, everybody, like you said, everybody finds their own path through art and you do, you do you. And I don't say that with any snark. I like, I really mean it. You do you. Yeah. It's good. That's what I, I don't know what you got anything else for today. No, I, I thought it was an interesting conversation. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm navigating this new scene. I'm meeting people with the different perspectives. I don't have a good sense. It seems like there's a pretty healthy original, um, seen down here you know some of the bigger places there's there's no big club that's a that's a, a cover band dance club like there are in, in some other places mm. and so um so anyway you know it's a, it's a useful conversation they're all useful conversations yeah. you learn something every time right absolutely absolutely yeah no I, it's always good to dig into this stuff and yep. rem even even reminding myself of my own perspective it's like oh yeah you know there you go so yeah Thanks for listening, folks. Again, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. We love to hear from you. In fact, we had a couple of comments that we didn't get to today, but we will. We promise we will. Oh, yeah. 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 You got anything else? Or are we, uh, we good to go? I think we covered some good ground today. All right. Well, have a good week, folks. Have fun. What's the thing we say? Don't get caught. No, that's the other podcast I do. What do we say here? <laughs> Always be caught.
always be performing. That's what it is.